After a four decades long slumber, the world's largest active volcano is now spewing molten lava and raining ash near the very top of Hawaii's Big Island. The western region of the U.S. is home to a sleeping giant. It periodically stirs, but hasn't awakened from sleep in about 70,000 years. But when it awakens, it may howl and heave with a volcanic eruption as we have never seen before. What is happening in Yellowstone? And what about this wonderful park is causing officials to worry? Yellowstone National Park, the first national park in the United States and possibly the entire world, is situated in Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho. On March 1, 1872, Ulysses S. Grant officially established the park. With 2,219,789 acres, Yellowstone National Park unites Grand Teton National Park and neighboring national forests to form the Greater Yellowstone Ecosystem, which is bigger than Rhode Island and Delaware states. In 1978, the park was designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Yellowstone National Park is located on top of the Yellowstone Caldera, which is thought to be an active supervolcano and is home to several geysers and boiling springs. Old Faithful, the most well-known geyser was the first to receive a name. The tallest geyser is called Steamboat, however, it only erupts occasionally. You can find more than 17,000 different tree and blooming plant species in Yellowstone. Thermus aquaticus, a type of unique bacteria that aids DNA replication, flourish in the hot springs. The number of huge animal species is well over 50, including bison, black bears, wolves, grizzly bears, elk, and moose. Some population's control in parks has occasionally proved contentious. People have traveled to Yellowstone for hundreds of years to hunt, fish, and watch the natural world. Following the first comprehensive expedition in 1869 and a geological survey in 1871, Congress and President Grant established the park. After that, tourism increased. In 2014, there were more than 4 million visits annually, moving from stagecoaches and horses to trains and then cars. 4,860,538 visitors, which was a record high, was seen in 2021. There needs to be a system for making reservations for admittance. The main draws include hiking, camping, fishing, and studying the hydrological and animal aspects. Visitors engage with the bears, even feeding them until 1970. Thankfully, feeding is no longer permitted. Please keep in mind that every animal in Yellowstone National Park is a wild animal. Well, let's look at what a supervolcano is and what it is capable of. As reports of the impending threat from supervolcanoes become even more exaggerated, they're akin to the supervillains of the geologic world. Massive eruptions can be dangerous, yet there are many myths about them. A volcano is classified as super by the United States Geological Survey if it's experienced at least one eruption that discharged more than 240 cubic miles of material, or slightly more than twice the volume of Lake Erie. This puts it at magnitude 8 the highest possible score on the Volcanic Explosivity Index VEI, a scale used to gauge an eruption's explosivity. These are significant eruptions with wide-ranging effects, from avalanches of hot rock and gas rushing down the volcano's flanks to climatic changes on a global scale. However, there is a crucial qualification that most people frequently forget concerning supervolcanoes. Just because a volcano has experienced a super eruption once or even twice in the past doesn't guarantee that subsequent eruptions will be equally large. Furthermore, only a few volcanoes attain such super status. According to the USGS, not a single one of the roughly 5,000 eruptions with described VEI that occurred over the past 10,000 years was designated a VEI-8. Even though there may be dozens of volcanoes erupting daily, Geologists rated only 42 eruptions in the past 36 million years a VEI-8, or High 7. According to research by volcanologist Eric Clemetti for Wired, the term supervolcano has yet to have scientific beginnings. Conquering the World, a travelogue by Helen Bridgman, first used it in 1925. Since then, the phrase's rise to fame has been rocky. The term supervolcano has different meanings today than what it was first used in geology in the middle of the 20th century, according to Clemetti, a writer for Discover at the moment. 
Instead, the term supervolcano was frequently employed in the early literature to describe a combination of several volcanoes. Yellowstone Supervolcano This colossus is the supervolcano that lies beneath Yellowstone National Park, a wildlife and woodland preserve spread across the states of Wyoming, Idaho, and Montana. The volcano is located in northwestern Wyoming, home to most of Yellowstone. The land above Yellowstone Supervolcano sits on a hot region of molten and semi-molten rock known as magma. The ground swells as magma feeds into a magma chamber or reservoir located about 6 to 10 kilometers 4 to 6 miles beneath the park. The ground collapses when the magma solidifies and cools. Volcanologists have studied this activity since 1923 estimating that the ground rose roughly 25 centimeters, 9.8 inches, between 2004 and 2009. However, the land began to erode around 2010. Many scientists are concerned that Yellowstone will explode shortly due to the slow, steady buildup. And if it occurs, there's fear about the magnitude of the eruption. Dr. Steve Anderson, a volcanologist and earth sciences professor at the University of Northern Colorado, said the major concern is, what would happen if Yellowstone started shaking tomorrow? He honestly asks, and we don't believe we know what to expect. While scientists are unsure what to expect, they do have an idea, and most believe it will not be Armageddon. Indeed, according to Dr. Jacob Lowenstern, research geologist and scientist in charge of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, Yellowstone is currently a dormant volcano with minimal levels of instability. However, the recent degree of some surface activity stimulates conjecture about the magnitude of an eruption. The volcano has continued to climb at the quickest rate ever observed over the last decade. Yellowstone also has between 1,000 and 3,000 earthquakes every year on average. Most are hardly discernible, with magnitudes of three or less. Nonetheless, these quakes provide geologists with information on how quickly the magma chamber beneath the park is filling up. An increase in the park's shaking and rattling could signal that a new batch of magma was recently injected into the reservoir. Despite the increase in tremors, scientists do not believe the rumblings in the magma chamber will pose a threat anytime soon. However, because no one's been around to evaluate everything that happens in Yellowstone, it's tough to foresee what's going on making it difficult for geologists to foretell Yellowstone's next move. Examining the volcano's distant past does provide some insight. According to geologic data, Yellowstone has had three massive eruptions in the last 2.1 million years. According to volcanologists, the eruptions occurred at intervals of 600,000 to 800,000 years. Evidence from the last major catastrophe, estimated to have occurred approximately 640,000 years ago, is scattered throughout the park and thousands of kilometers of the surrounding area. Scientists estimate that the most recent Yellowstone explosion was 1,000 times more powerful than the infamous 1980 Mount St. Helens eruption, which killed 56 people and many animals and destroyed hundreds of square kilometers of land in Washington and Oregon. The last blast from Yellowstone's supervolcano thousands of years ago sent a deadly plume of hot ash, molten rock, and toxic gases thousands of meters into the air. A third of the continent was most likely completely dark. Pyroclastic flows, rapid currents of hot, dry rock fragments and gases sped through the landscape, burying or crushing everything in their path. Magma erupting from the ground destroyed the once beautiful countryside for kilometers. The Yellowstone Caldera, which is 50 kilometers 30 miles broad and 70 kilometers 45 miles long, contains some remnants of the last eruption. The heavy volcanic material left over from the eruption may still be observed in an area known as the Lava Creek Tuff. Scientists used a relatively new technique on a 20-year-old archive of seismic data to determine how much geological goulash could erupt from a volcano in the event of an eruption. Studies show that Yellowstone's upper magma reservoir contains more molten rock than previously believed. 16 to 20 percent of that is liquid, in contrast to previous estimates of about 10 percent. As a result of the Yellowstone supervolcano's history of producing some of the greatest known eruptions, there's a great deal of interest in keeping track of its activities. But is it feasible to foretell the exact moment the volcano would erupt again? 
a five-mile deep reservoir of hot lava lurks under Yellowstone National Park, fueled by a massive plume of molten rock welling up from hundreds of miles below. Many of the park's famous geysers and hot springs result from this heat. And as magma flows into the chamber and cools, the ground above rises and lowers regularly. That magma chamber has erupted only a few times throughout history. The great majority of Yellowstone's eruptions have been smaller lava flows, the most recent occurring around 70,000 years ago at Pitchstone Plateau. So, how might a Yellowstone eruption appear? Let us stress that the chances of any Yellowstone explosion, large or small, are extremely remote. But if we're talking hypothetically, the most likely Yellowstone eruption scenario is a smaller event, with lava flows like what's currently happening at Iceland's Barra Bunga and maybe a normal volcanic explosion. This would most likely be caused by a series of earthquakes in a specific park area when the magma rose to the surface. The warning indications would be far more pronounced in the improbable event of a considerably larger super eruption. We'd probably experience strong seismic activity across the entire park at first. Before an eruption, those tremors could take weeks or months to break up the rocks above the magma. And what if there was a super eruption, an event 1,000 times more powerful than an ordinary volcanic eruption spewed at least 240 cubic miles of material and lasted weeks or months? The park would contain lava flows within a short radius of 40 miles or so. Only approximately one-third of the material would ever reach the atmosphere. Volcanic ash, a mixture of shattered rock and glass propelled kilometers into the air and dispersed over the nation, would cause the most damage. In their latest study, Lowenstern and his colleagues concluded that an eruption would produce an umbrella cloud that would spread evenly in all directions by examining past ash deposits and cutting-edge modeling. It is not yet certain the threat this supervolcano poses to us currently, but its eruption would certainly alter our world as we know it. Please share your thoughts with us in the comment section. Remember to like and share our videos. Bye for now.